And we're back again for episode two, The House of Dry. We're more bootleg, more stronger, more faster than ever. And of course, always bring our bootleg opinions. Hi, Rock. Hello. We just did a quick change and literally. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell nobody that, girl. I mean, it's been a whole week. Mm -hmm. It's a whole week and we just did a whole new look. It's crazy. Bootleg opinions. Hey, squirrel friends. When one video ends, just open up another one. It's called cringe viewing. Go ahead. I support you. Now look over there. What do you think of the challenge? It was Snatch Game. Oh my God. Snatch Game. Everyone waits for Snatch Game, but here's the thing. What's the thing? These are all people who have won Snatch Game before, so I was really looking forward to this episode. But the twist is they're doing two characters. What a way to really put them on the spot. I'm so down for that. Same here. And what two better queens to judge Snatch Game and fashion than two queens that have never done Snatch Game? Nope, never. <laughs> we have no good advice for you, but we will rip you to shreds. <laughs> we will give you our opinions on what we think you could have done from our living rooms, baby. Exactly. Now, me and Kamora Hall were talking about All-Stars if they ever do an early out season mm -hmm. because, you know, we're onto All-Stars, right? Yeah. And and if they ever do an early out season, the whole cast will be Asian. <laughs> right? Yeah. It will be me, it will be you, it will be Kamora, it will be something Wong. And James Mansfield, all the Asian people. Yes, her, it will be kind, everybody Asian. Uh-huh. Let's get to it, right? Let's get to it. Yeah, let's get to it. We got places to be, okay. We got places to be, people to do, people to process. Money to make. People to kill. We trying to kill. People that annoy me. <laughs> all stars, all Asian season. Yeah, we will finally be the representation that y'all be looking for. Not the best representation, but representation nonetheless. Watch, it's gonna be the whole season's Asian and then James Mansfield's gonna win. Oh girl, with Scarlett Adams, girl. <laughs> Now, who stood out to you in the Snatch Games? Because there were two. So from the first batch of people, I would say- I like how you said batch of people as if they're like animals. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. No, it's a batch of people for that exact reason. Monet Exchange is Mike Tyson. That was so funny. Yeah, speaking of male Snatch Games, I really enjoy that Drag Race is really moving in the direct- Car again. <laughs> Hold on one second. <laughs> That's Drag Race moving in the direction that you want it to go to. <laughs> Speaking of doing male impersonations, I really like the direction that Drag Race is taking it, that male impersonations are also drag. Mm -hmm. Because I remember that during my season still, I think it was still kind of iffy for queens to do male snatch games. Oh, I Because see. it was looked at if it wasn't drag enough, if that makes sense. I mean, it only takes like a few people to really do a good snatch game to really just prove like, it really doesn't matter what person you're playing as long as it's funny. Exactly. The queens are here to teach the show a lesson. Mm -hmm. The other way around. <laughs> I also really loved Raja as Madam and the fact that they were able to get Raja to be Madam because you know they have such a hard time getting like licenses for people or entities that are not like real life people. But the fact that Raja did Madam, had the full face prosthetic, the arm puppet movements, and was just also funny. I love that. That was my favorite favorite from the first batch. Speaking of copyrights, they really got the money this season. The queens are winning $200,000. On top of that, they got Cameron Diaz and Naomi Campbells. And of course, in the second episode during the lip sync, they got Adele. My season, my lip sync was whole. Celebrity skin girl. <laughs> Obviously, Hole and Courtney Love is an icon, but you know, it's just not the same amount of copyright fees that you have to pay, you know. Oh, Jada also stood out to me too, but because really? it was really bad. Yeah, okay, that I believe. But it was like bad in like a funny Jada way. She knew she wasn't gonna win. She knew she wasn't gonna win, so she was just there. And going back to the critiques, what we said in the previous episode, if you haven't watched, go check it out, link in the description, that the judges are very lenient with the critiques with these queens. They were like, you didn't really slay in Snatch Game, but we still love you. <laughs> like, what the f***? If there was a regular season, girl, they would have dragged them through the mud. Oh, they would have dragged her to f filth. Well, now they don't have to because they don't have to put anyone in the bottom. Now, for both Snatch Games, the two queens that really stood out to me were Trinity the Tuck. Uh-huh. And of course, Jinx Monsoon. I said this before in the promo looks, we know Jinx is not a looks queen and I stand by it, uh -huh. but she will excel in other things like Snatch Game, yeah. the talk show host, and also acting challenges. She will slay in these challenges and it is no stranger that she did it in this episode. She knocked it out of the park, out of this universe. 
Like, the whole bar was cheering for her. Even when Snatch Game was done, she kept her Judy Garland character intact. She kept going and running with it. It's so funny. The part that was making me giggle so much was when she was singing the first time and she just kept pulling the microphone cord and it just kept getting longer and longer and longer. <laughs> And another thing, I'm just gonna keep bragging about James. Uh, James. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep bragging about Jinx. But what made it more funny was that she keeps breaking that fourth wall. When RuPaul said, what's over the rainbow? She said, you stupid idiot. Not word for word. You stupid idiot. It's a set, girl. It goes nowhere. It's a set. There's, there's wood and it's cardboard and it's not, it's not a real rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx has been preparing Judy Garland impersonations since her season. Since they've been touring with Snatch Game, she always pulls out Judy. She always pulls out Liza. I think she's always said she's wanted to do Judy and Liza as the same character. Just have different makeup and then just switch back and forth and have a conversation. Like, Jinx has been doing a Judy Garland impersonation since before she came out of the womb. That's how long she's been ready for this. I also really like Trinity too because she looked like Satan. And you know what I love? about that character too was that she made it hella gay. She was like, hey girl. It was really cool in camp. And of course she serves a Leslie Jordan the house down boots. And the way that she was sitting like all the way down here because Leslie Jordan we all know is like four foot. But you know what? I don't know if you ever seen any photos of Leslie Jordan when he was young. Ooh. What? Ooh. Yeah, look it up, baby. I was shocked. Is your basement flooding from young Leslie Jordan? Is this happening right here, right now on Bootleg Opinions? Yes, honey. I'm getting rejected from the House of Dry as we speak. <laughs> Ooh, look it up, baby. Look it up. Raja should have been in the top two this week because I absolutely loved her Diana Vreeland. And they didn't make a reference to Robbie Turner from season... Uh, they didn't make a reference to Robbie from season eight. They weren't like, oh, it's been done before. And it was just so fresh. It was so funny. The first line that came out of Raja's mouth was like, what's in? Pepper, pepper mittens. You know, I really think that pepper mittens are in it. Pepper mittens. It was so <laughs> funny. That was the character that we were missing the last time it was on the show. Now, you mentioned that Raja should have been in the top two, which I disagree. I thought she did well, but it wasn't the same level as Trinity and Jinx. Then who do you think should have been in top two then, alongside with Jada, with Raja? I think Raja and Jinx should have been in the top two. Okay, so do you think that Trinity should have been third then? I think she would have been third, yes. That's good. It's okay, we have different bootleg opinions, and that's what makes bootleg opinions fabulous. Now, on to the lip sync to Adele. Rumor, Rumor has, has it. it. Do you think the correct Rumor person won? It. Of course, Jinx won, Rumor which I agree. Yeah, I definitely think that Jinx should have won, especially with her performance in the Snatch Game. The, that's how weird lip, that's a song that, that's the, oh goodness. That is a weird song to lip sync to. Why? I get that it's like Adele, you know, oh my God, it's Adele. It doesn't feel like a good lip sync song to perform to. It didn't have like too many dips and valleys. It was like boom, clap, boom, clap. Yeah, I agree with you. I was just asking why so you can say the things that's supposed to be hateful so I don't have to say it, girl. I mean, I'm not like over here being like, oh my God, she's the lyrical genius of our generation. I don't know, no, it's, rumor has it, it was okay. I wish that it was more of a song that they could have camped it up to for Snatch Game. I agree with you that it was a song that was very, not much ups and downs, not much of a roller coaster. It doesn't yeah. take you on a journey. I think that what made Trinity not stand out in the lip sync, although I think she did great, was I think she had an outfit that was too sexy. I know it sounds really stupid, but I do think that costumes really do help play a part in the lip sync. She was dressed enough for the song, I just felt like. Well, her wig fell off too. Yeah, they cut that out. We saw it, girl, but yeah, you know, we saw. We saw it, but it, we didn't see it, you know? Yeah, they really love the queens of the season, girl. They are not trying to give them any bad edit. <laughs> but yeah, we saw it went off. Yuhua's wig fell off in her season and it didn't actually. They just edited it on. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much the editing is favoring them this time. Stop Asian hate! <laughs> it's AAPI month. Speaking of AAPI month, uh, somebody ruined my booth, girl. What the f y'all? I'm sorry, my bad. Yeah. I was like, 3%? We gotta get her out of here. <laughs> um, <laughs> Although it was really well, I thought it was more dressed for like Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera. It was very youthful. Well, she doesn't have any old looking outfits and Jinx has a plethora. <laughs> well, Jinx just pulled out one of her random outfits and she looks old. And she had black leggings. 
That was the outfit. Yeah, girl. But she did say that her drag is like a 30 year old playing a 50 year old. So it makes sense. So I think that in the end, Jinx did win. Cougar realness. Cuckoo. Do you want to see my cuckoo again? Want to see my cuckoo again? We want to say condolences to this chair. <laughs> I want to say my condolences to the chair. It was a nice chair. I held a lot of people's cuckoo and it's gone now. Cuculita. Cuculita. <laughs> This video is sponsored by Backstage, a mobile app created to support creators like me by people like you. Tell me more. Well, it's where I get to interact with fans one on one. It's absolutely free to sign up and you get access to exclusive content, behind the scenes, one on one chat with me. The most fun part is that you, the audience, also get to input your thoughts and opinions of what I should create in videos. Wow, that is so cool. So what are you waiting for? Go sashay away to the link in the description and sign up for Backstage via your mobile app. Get all the exclusive contents, behind the scenes, early access, of course, one-on-one -on -one chats with me, Yuha Masaki. Stay put, like y'all. And you know what? I'm gonna sign up right now. And of course, it is absolutely free to sign up and you get to win coins too. Shante, you stay. The category is what? Pleather. And we first up have Monet Exchange. Wow, delicious, glowing, fitting beautifully. I love this 1920s finger wave hair. I love this sculpted like eight pack or six pack, whatever she got on, because you know that this has to be sculpted to her body because this does not stretch at all. Uh -huh. And I really love how fitting this dress is. Now, usually I'm not a big fan of having a bow in the front because I think that it ruins the illusion of proportionalizing. But the fact that she kept touching that bow and just kept holding it, it really sold the bow. I think she looks beautiful in this. Also the proportions from the bow made the silhouette, yeah. And you know what I especially love about this is that this material is really hard to work with because we know this barely stretches and it just fits to her body really well. So whoever designed it, I'm not saying her because I know for a damn fact that she did not make this. Um, so congratulations to your designer. Your designer, wow. I think it's cute. The only thing for me is the part that makes it work for a lot of people, the abdominals and the okay. huge sculpted muscles. It doesn't work for me. From when she turned, it looked very disjointed, but everything else, the color, the silhouette, okay. perfect. I do like it. Well, I loved it. Now let's go back to the first episode when she was lip syncing. She wore a June Jambalaya is chocolate look with the short pussycat hair, animal print. Oh my God, she did. I was like, oh my God, this looks really familiar. And I was like, oh, June Jambalaya, it's chocolate. June Jambalaya. So let's talk about the next person. Up next we have Evie Oddly, who is in an anime inspired pleather outfit. Personally for me, this doesn't read anime. It kind of looks like in the 2000s when anime was starting to get popular and cartoonists were like starting to get greenlit for shows that looked like anime, like Japanimation, like American Teen Titans, Avatar. While I have no problem with the narratives of those shows, the art styles for that look like a really cheap knockoff. If you guys get it, you get it. This looks like Kappa Mikey. This looks like Kappa Mikey version of what someone thinks that anime is. So it's like an abridged version of like an anime character. It just doesn't read well for me. The overcoat just was too much. It's not flattering. I do appreciate that in some universe, if she had looked like a low polygon, like if she was like on the PS1, she would look like a DDR character. That's fine. But she totally just gave me like Megas XLR fantasy and that's not a good thing. Not the strongest on the runway, but I think I would like it more if the skirts were shorter and if the jacket was shorter so that it doesn't uh -huh. overlap each other. You know what this look kind of reminds me? Almost looks like RuPaul's new album cover. Oh yeah, I can see that. Right? Yeah. yeah. Next up is Raja. She's serving you actually the same color scheme that Evie is kind of serving. People always throw out Vivian Westwood when a lot of like fabrics and stuff clash and it kind of has that kind of punk feeling. I think here with the feathers and all of the ruffles and the pleather and the straps, it looks chic. Especially because she knows how to proportion her body really well. I think it looks great on her and it looks very fashion forward like we don't get it now, but we'll get it in five years. Mm -hmm. I love this and I think it looks cool and inventive. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you would definitely see this on a runway show. Very well made with the pleather, with the ruffles on the arms, how it goes straight into her hand. The back is lined, the feather is right, the ruffle is right, the shoe is right, the walk is right. This almost seems like her walking down a fashion runway line. Yeah. 
Up next, we have the puffer jacket queen herself. We have Trinity and she is doing her take on a puffer jacket. I think it's really cute. I love the color choices, of course, because I love pastel. I think the hair is really cute and it kind of adds on to that. I think it's, she's going for like almost an, an 80s vibe. If she added anything, like a puffer train would have been really cool. But I don't like where the second puff on the top sits on her stomach. Mm -hmm. I really want to like it because of all the colors. It's middle of the road for me. It's not my favorite. She looks like a dreamsicle ice cream cone. I think that for me, if she has those two puffs at the top, it would read more as ice cream. I don't know if that's the direction that she's going for. Maybe if she has like some drips of ice cream on her hair, maybe like just kind of dripping uh -huh. down. You know what I mean? That would have made more sense. But you're right. The middle part does seem a little bit weird. I would have liked for her to just do one tier, but she does look good. If the reference is a puffer jacket, either she could have had a collar or just like a big zipper in the front. Just like a big oversized Kingdom Hearts zipper to really just say, hey, this is a puffer jacket. Mm. Next up is the Vivian. And you know what this is giving me? I know this is not a copy because we all know that they filmed it around the same time. They just guys shoulder pads. What? Oh, cute. I love this look. The red from the hat to the outfit, to the long shoes and the gloves, and the fact that she has this black hair to really pop from the outfit. This is what I'm talking about, pleather. I see it right away. Love this. I definitely see it too. She looks amazing. Her shoulders give a very slimming effect to her whole entire proportion and silhouette, but she still looks curvy and cool. Yeah, and those shoes, wow. Oh. So cool. Give it up for the Vivian for wearing high shoes every runway, because by the time we get to All Stars, everyone's like, well, my feet hurt, kitten heel time. Yeah, she's talking about you, Alaska. <laughs> All right, up next we have Jinx Monsoon in almost... Pause, 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 pause. Can I just plug my computer in really quick? Is that okay? Give me yeah, 30 sure. seconds. Okay, Jinx Monsoon is up next in this pleather mint bubblegum fantasy. I do appreciate this look. I always appreciate someone who takes the concept of a runway, especially with something like pleather, and they turn it on their head and they turn it into something that is a different genre. I do wish that this look had a bit more volume in the bustle with the pleather. Really have a lot of pleather in there to really just drive home the fact that it's elegant. But I think it looks very flattering, very cool. I love that she kept like the pleather jacket top with the bodice. I think that was a good touch. Yeah, I think she looks absolutely great in this color. She looks gorgeous. Hmm. I kind of disagree. That's fine. <laughs> kind of almost everything you said, to be honest. According to what she brought last week, wow, beautiful. We know she knows proportions. And like you said, the proportions are just very off with this. There should have been more layers of the fabric. Yeah, it should have been more to that bustle. There should have been like layers and layers and layers of pleather. What she did at the bottom is great, but then even the jacket, the collar was too small. But yeah, more fabric. I get it. 50, 45 pound weight limit on a bag. Mm -hmm. I get it, pleather is heavy. Yeah. But for my personal opinion, just needed more. Even with the arms, I think she could have added. That's a single circle. It should have been at least a double circle. Yeah, because the fact that the middle is so light color and then the pink is such a darker pink, it just goes from like the top into the bottom. So this unfortunately to me is a no because we know she can bring it according to the first episode. But her hair is beautiful though. Yeah, definitely. Next up is Jada Essence Hall. Wow. When I first saw Monet exchange look, I was like, that is my favorite look of the night. And then I saw this. This is so bad. This is so bad and so hot and so sexy and so seductive. Now, I think that without the coat, it would have been a really simple pants and top. But the fact that she has this coat with this dangerous red lining underneath, and then she got the lining to match the sunglasses and this beautiful hair bouncing at the back of her when she was walking down the runway, just takes it to another level. Pleather the house down boots. I stand by this look. This is the biggest love letter, love letter to pleather. That is a mouthful. And just the full blade mixed with the Aaliyah Queen of the Damned sort of fantasy with the silhouette yeah. is really, really cool. And I would say this is more of like an era piece of like a 2000 sleek Y2K, very contemporary. The cutouts on the top look really good and fun and interesting. Favorite look of the week. Favorite. So cool. Yeah. When she came out, my breath just immediately left my body. So good looking. Oh, your breath. <laughs> I thought you were gonna take it to somewhere else with your breath. 
What, my bad breath? <laughs> Your breath was just like... It stunk up. I don't know. I don't know. I just thought you were going to take me somewhere to a joke with your breath. I made my breath fresh. Okay, cool. Got it. Last up, we have Shea Coulee in her Michelle Pfeiffer, Tim Burton, Batman, Catwoman inspired pleather fantasy. I think that this was really interesting. It looked good on her. It definitely was one of the looks where you pack for Drag Race and you're like, all right, all my looks are bulky. What is the small look I'm going to bring so it doesn't take up 45 pounds and it's easy to bring? I think this look is cool and sleek, but I definitely think this is the one that kind of is more predictable from a theme like pleather. I think that it looks good. It's interesting. I think that the Lady Bunny RuPaul shoes are very much an interesting choice to have with this. I think that the pleather could have gone all the way down to the shoe. But I feel like there's references that I'm not getting with the fabric that I wish I did get. For me, it looks good, but it's not my favorite. Not my favorite as well. I got the reference with what she wrote on the outfit. It's almost like reading a comic book, right? Because she has BAM, she's got PUR on there, right? I thought that she could have pushed it more, just like Jada Essence Hall look. It was a top and pair of pants. But the fact that she has sunglasses and that coat yeah. with the red lining just takes it to another level. If she has something else, that would have took it to another level. And even the legs was weird for me. Didn't really connect for me. I feel you. Not the best. She can do better, girl. We know it. Well, that's the thing is she sets the bar so high that the minute it's like just a little bit lower, we're like, I see you sleeping. She's talking about you, Aiden. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so who is your favorite look out of all of these runway looks? Jada, 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 Jada. The essence of Hall does it again. That's my favorite Hall. And I'm U-Haul from down the hall. <laughs> My top two looks are Monet Exchange and Jada Essence Hall, but I'm gonna give it to Jada Essence Hall. Congrats again. You please have won nothing. Nothing. But you have won the Pointer Sisters in or out of their Christian underwears. <laughs> That's it? Okay. That's it. Well, thank you, Rock, for joining Bootleg Opinions on this episode again. I'll see you very soon. Thank you so much. And if you guys want to follow me anywhere, it's at Rock'em Sakura on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and of course here on YouTube at youtube.com slash Rock'em Sakura. And if you want to get your own custom Rock'em Sakura merch, go to Rock'em Sakura.com where I hand draw all of my own merch. Fabulous. She's a pro at this already. I don't even have to ask her where we can find you. And my name is Yuha Masaki. If I'm on all platforms under Yuha Masaki. And again, thank you, Rock, for staying up until 2 a.m. to get bootleg with me. Yes, it's 2 a.m. Of course. Anytime I'm ready to get dry with you, Miss Yu Hua. Come get dry. Thank God she's not here. <laughs> <You> dumb. <laughs> <laughs>